So these next couple of problems are going to be a little trickier, um, but again, we're going to try to go through them in a way that hopefully will make it a little bit easier for you. So the first one is got uh, fractions in it, which again, fractions are not everybody's favorite. So here's what I would recommend. Now the process in the book says to multiply by the LCD. Well, I'm going to do a slight twist to that. And I'm going to uh, use the LCD, but I'm not going to multiply by it. So here's, here's the way I would do it. Find your LCD, first of all. So you got fives and threes. Well, LCD in this case is just going to be 15. So remember, if you're stuck, you can always multiply them together. Uh, might not be the least, but it will work. So now what you want to do is change all of your denominators to 15s. So we got all of our denominators changed to 15s. It's hard to see, but you got a minus sign in there still from, from up there. And so now we got to be careful and make sure we change the tops. Remember, if you change the bottoms, you also have to change the tops. So what did we multiply by to get to 15? We had to multiply by 3. So if we do that on the top, now I'm not going to write it all out, but I'll write it like this. So whenever we had up there, well, I'm going to put it in parentheses, and then I'll just multiply it by the 3. I'll take care of all that in the next step. Same idea here. I got the 3 times the 8, and over here, I already got the minus taken care of, but now we had to multiply it by 5, so now I don't really need to put the R in parentheses, but I will just for repetition. So now the tops and the bottoms have all been adjusted, and so everything should still be equal to what it was originally. Here's the fun part. Now that all the denominators are the same, I can do this. I can just cross them right out. Now you're probably saying, well, why? Why can't I do that? Well, he, technically what you're doing when you cross those out is you're multiplying everything by 15. If you multiply the left side by 15 and the right side by 15, all those 15s are going to cancel each other out. So that's the nice thing about it. So now we have no more fractions to worry about. So we can now distribute, get rid of those parentheses, and then start breaking it down, finishing it off. So if we distribute, we should get a 3r minus 24 plus 24 equals a negative 5r. All right, so now if we simplify, well, we got a minus 24 and a plus 24, so those are just going to cancel each other out completely. So you're left with 3r equals a minus 5r. And so now we divide well we don't divide yet because we got R's on both sides of the equals we want all the R's on one side so now which one should we move well remember we, we said to move the smaller of the two now technically a negative number is smaller than a positive one so really we want to move this minus 5 R to the other side so if we do the opposite and add 5 R that cancels them out. And over here, we got 8R. So now what's on the other side? Well, if everything's gone, if everything cancels, all that's left is 0. So 0 is all by itself on the right-hand side. So now what? Well, now we still divide. We still get rid of that 8. So we have to divide by 8. 8's cancel. 0 divided by 8, we can do that. 0 on the bottom is bad, but 0 on the top is okay. So that should be equal to 0. All right. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention in previous videos is when you're solving these equations, the one thing that I try to always do is keep that equal sign in the middle and not have it move. Now, you can see here that the equal sign is pretty consistently on that line. 
And if I go up to my other ones, you can see the same thing. That equal sign falls right on that line. So that's the thing. Your equal sign shouldn't be moving around anywhere. You know, it should try to keep it right smack dab in the middle and just keep simplifying on both sides until you start to move stuff around. All right. Now, this last one has got decimals in it, which you're thinking, well, why is this one so hard? We can work with decimals, right? Well, decimals are like fractions. We can get rid of those decimals if we want to. We don't have to, but we can. So looking at this one here, the first thing I would do, though, is get rid of those parentheses. Those are always going to be a troublemaker if you're not careful. So get rid of those first. So if we multiply that in by distributing, we should get 0.13k plus 0.13 times 300 is 39. So... Not anything too drastic so far, but some people are sloppy with decimal points. You know, they don't like to put the zeros in front, so those decimal points sometimes just get lost. Accidentally, but they get lost. So, a way to get rid of them right off the bat is to multiply both sides of the equation by something. That makes it move two spots. What do you think that number would be? You guessed it. It should be 100. If we multiply both sides by 100, that moves the decimal point over two spots on everything, though. So it's going to move it two spots on the first, two spots on the second, and two spots on the third. So 39 is going to change to 3,900. And then we got 6,100 over here. Now we don't have to worry about those decimal points anymore. So we can combine. So we have 22K. And now we can start to get rid of these two numbers. So get rid of the adding and subtracting first. So we want to subtract. And then... 6,100 minus 3,900, I think that might be 2,200, and then we can get rid of the 22 by dividing. We get k equal to 100. So, and now remember, if you're not 100% sure that you're right, you can always go plug it back into the original, and it should check. So... Always check if you're not sure. But there's that line again. So it's a nice little trick and a way to keep things separated from one side to the other. So, okay. So I'm going to stop there and then we'll take a look at the next part of this section which gets into the different types of equations we could possibly see based on the solution sets. So we'll see you in just a bit.